Peace. I'm your brother Crumb, and you are now watching Crumb TV. Brother Red Pill representing Nola Ledge, one half of the Twin Pillars. I am here rocking with Crumb TV. No, you are watching Crumb TV. You can find me on Crumb TV. You can catch me on Crumb TV. This is Chief Kalanako here on Crumb TV. I am Joy Allen of the Memoirs of a Karmic Dynasty in the Crumb TV studio. Uh, honored to be on your program, brother. Peace. Peace. Crumb TV. Peace. Ashe. Islam. Namaste, Hotel, Grand Rising, Assalamu Alaikum, Walaikum Salam, Bundia, Oseo, Umjambo, Halito, Bonjour, Wagwan, What up though? What's up? <laughs> Whatever the greeting is in your respective language, I am your humble brother Crumb here for another installation of Crumb TV. You already know what it is, family. This video is called Happy White History Month, part four. This is the final episode. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to put some respect on your name and acknowledge the first responders. Within the first two minutes, we have a little bit less than 50 first responders. So I'm only going to go over the, per the first three, which is the perfect trifecta for time's sake, because I want to acknowledge all of you. But uh, if we can just do this part, I think we'll all be greatly appreciative to move the video forward. Number one in the building of the perfect trifecta of the first responders is Ms. Jelly. She says, we back love and peace. I see you. Oh, oh she's, she's watching and she has her pen and paper. Y'all better read the signs and symbols. Don't just read the letters and the words and the sentences. And You better read the signs and the symbols as well. Number two in the building of this perfect trifecta of the first responders is Music Land HQ82. Put some respect on his name. He says, peace and love, brother crumb. Uh, look, looks like he's saying, if I'm wrong, charge it to my mind, not my heart. But it looks like he's saying, bless up. I believe that is what he's saying. Signs and symbols for the conscious mind. I think... I should be good in my afterlife if I'm reading these chapters right. <laughs> number, number three, I'm, I'm just giving him his love. Master, uh, this is uh, Music Land HQ82 once again, says master student at work. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out to all the master students. The number, official number three, he just read his, his drink twice. He was in here twice, so hey, I gave it to him. True King, he's a usual suspect. We already know these are all the usual suspects because, you know, we already know what the deal is. He says, peace, family, and we all hopefully will say peace back. I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. No, uh, so with that said, uh, that's the perfect trifecta. I want to uh, give a real big shout out to my sponsors who make this video happen and i love this jank uh family let's go interlink we are a one in the same no start over did some god i'm the alpha and omega i'm the ancient other days i'm the rahmani rahim and you don't know where i come you don't know from where i came all you know is i am one with many aspects different names then one day the thought formed into a word inside my brain then i said let it be the next thing i heard a bang then i split up into infinite dimensions what a chain now we're all interlinked we are a one in the same Yes, sir. That joint is hot sauce. Uh, also, within the first five minutes, I want to give myself a little shout out as well. Um, I am on TikTok. So if you're on TikTok, rock with me if you rock with me. Um, if you want me to follow you, I will follow you for 30 days. Uh, this platform is new. I just created this TikTok. Only, I think I got like only got 10 posts up here. Hold on. Okay. It's a little bit more than 10. Uh, what's this? Four? times one, two, three, four, five, four times five, six, four times six is 24. Plus those other three is 27. I only got 27 videos up here. My joint is jumping like Jordan. If you want me to follow you a uh, hundred dollars, I follow you for uh, 28 days. Uh, so shout out to me. Uh, I'm jumping like Jordan. This is new. This is all new this morning. It just came in. 
uh, I just posted this yesterday, a lot of stuff, you know, just kind of whatever. Anyway, so that's the first five minutes. This video is called Yaku. Oh, I'm sorry. Happy White History Month, part four. We're going to go through the white history. Uh, literally, let's go through white history um, because everything starts with us. Even white history is so-called black history. We're not black they're not white but if we all want to play that game for these next 28 days i'm gonna do it so let's go uh i left off where uh yaku gets kicked out of uh the fertile crescent and he goes around africa um on a boat and people jump ship on him so let's see what it says oh hold, let me uh hit the volume let me make sure my mic is right yeah it's right and i'm gonna move this over here to you uh, close enough all right, let's go. Who actually made it to their destination of the island of Patmos in the Aegean Sea. As king on his island, Yakub set up birth control and planned parenthood laws which would contribute to his plan of negative eugenics and genocide to breed his albinoid tribe. Now, when we're dealing with negative eugenics, you have to understand there are negative eugenics and positive eugenics. Everybody tells you, hey, we just want to preserve our race. And for all intents and purposes, that is a true statement but it, it can and easily and does and is an agenda as well. Yakub made it a law that only the lighter complexion people could have children. People with darker complexions were put to death, and when children were born, nurses were ordered to have the darker babies killed by pricking the brains with a sharp needle as soon as the child's head was out of the mother, but the lighter babies were allowed to live. Yakub's aim was to kill and destroy the Ebonoid nation. Yakub would have the dead bodies of the darker babies fed to wild beasts, and if they could not find a wild beast to feed the bodies to, they would take the dead bodies of the babies to a cremator to be burned. This is the level of intense hatred Yakub had in his heart. This process went on for years on Yakub's island as Yakub trained his sons and grandsons to carry on his work after he died. Yakub died at the age of 150 years old from a brain tumor. As the father of Trichnology, Yakub taught his people a doctrine which would enable them to rule the world for 6,000 years. Yakub also taught his people that God is a spirit and a spook and not a man. And Yakub was the founder of the doc. Yakub. Yakub told his people, I'm going to create this idea because I'm a smart dude. And this idea is going to be that there is a sky daddy outside of you. And I need you to go propagate that to the people. So this whole thing about you know, something being outside of us, heaven, hell, demons, uh, boogeymans, whatever. Uh, that's all a supposedly a new idea coming from him. Doctrine that unlike attracts and like repels. After 200 years on Yakub's island, all of the darker babies had been done away with, and all babies were born of a new tribe called the Rubedoid tribe. After another 200 years, all babies were born of an even newer tribe called the Citronoid tribe. And finally, after another 200 years, which makes 600 years total, all the babies born on Yakub's island were of Yakub's desired albinoid tribe. It took 600 years to breed Yakub's albinoid tribe, and every imagination of their heart and all of their actions were wicked continuously. The evilness of the albinoids not only affected themselves, but also affected the other peoples of the world. So, just in case you didn't catch part one, two, or three, his, uh, when he was on the boat, he was studying his own genetics and DNA and he saw his mama's side and he saw his daddy's side and he started uh, mating with the woman on, women on the ship while he was in exile heading towards the island of Patmos on the outskirts of Greece. And, you know, which is the place, you know, the European, Greece being the European Fertile Crescent, um, ver the European version of the Fertile Crescent. Anyway, um, so now we see where he grafted out all the babies to get closer and closer and closer to his mother's side of the family who had this quote unquote fighting spirit, somewhat like that of the Irish, uh, where they're famous for it is what I'm saying. Uh, so let's continue on just to catch anybody up who may not understand what's going on. Yakub's albinoids returned to the city where they were exiled from. Once back in the city, it took only six months for Yakub's albinoids to cause chaos and war amongst the Ebonoid people. So, uh, Yakub is dead. His people leave 
what we call Europe. When they leave Europe, they go back from whence they came. A lot of people say they went to Egypt, Mesopotamia, Sumer, the Canaan land, which they had to go through a lot of those places even to get down there, but typically they're going to say they went to Egypt. So why is that important? After six months, here we go with this sixth thing again. After six months, they like, all right, guys, you know what? Enough is enough. So um, let me see, did I put it in the right place? That's not right. Which is where, is this it? Yeah. I had it in the wrong section. So this is, let me just go back, see if I can go back. I think we're on Tumblr. I put, I typed in Tamahu terrorized Egypt. And as you can see, my spelling is horrible. Mm -hmm. However, you know, I, I'm not a good uh, wizard. I'm not good with the craft. Anyway, and and, and I'm, I'm, I'm making a, jo a, jo a joke, but I'll go on to explain that in a hot second. A lot of times you're going to hear me and you're like, oh, crime, they're not white people. Fine, fine. You need to stop calling us black and stop calling them white. Fine. Fine. Well, let's try Tamahu on for size. See how that fits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tamahu tastes good in my mouth. Yeah, I can I can do that. So you say, Crumb, why do y'all say Tamahu? Wh wh where'd you get that from? I, I made a whole video about it, but I found this to be a really good synopsis. The ancient Egyptians worried about the immigrant tribe of blue-eyed people among them that seemed to have proclivity for troublemaking. This is something completely different from Yakub family. This is not based off, oh, crumb, you're going, this is based off, no, this is not based off the Nation of Islam Yakub story. This is something else that is perfectly aligned with it, okay? They had red or blonde hair when we're dealing with red, you already know. Who is famous for being red in terms of Jacob's brother, Yaqub's brother? Who's famous for being red? What is Jacob's or Yaqub's? What is, what is his brother's name? According to the Bible and the Holy Quran. According to the Bible, the Torah and the Holy Quran, who is the brother of Jacob or Yaqub? What is his brother's name? I know somebody's about to pull it up. I'm too late with my Jeopardy music. I'm just waiting for somebody to hit that buzzer. There we go. Gemini, not. Ooh, I ain't going to lie. I kind of assumed there was going to be a guy who was going to get the answer right. But hey, that, there you have it. These are the master students who reveal themselves. <laughs> Titles like master student, you can't give yourself. Somebody, You have to. I'm the best. Okay, well, is it, just, is it just you saying you're the best or does everybody say you're the best? Oh, it's it, it's just me and my own mind. Jim and I are not saying she's the best. I'm saying she's the best. I've adorned her with this title of master student because a lot of people, I'm just Google it. I'm a master student, Crom, and then when we go to debating or whatever the case may be, I don't do that. But I assume that when I be going back and forth with people on the internet, they just do a quick Google search. But those ones who you ask, oh, those are the master students. That's that, that's not a Google search. That's 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 study. Study to show to show thyself approved. This is this is this is something else. Has nothing to do with that that thing though. They had red or blonde hair and blue eyes and lived at the edge of the desert. The Egyptians called them Tamahu, T A M A H U. There's a whole elaborate story to how this name comes about. It's very interesting. It has something to do with France. A guy by the name uh, Jean Champelion. Very, very interesting. I already made a video about it. Go check it out. Um, called The Origins of White People. The Created Ones, a clear allusion to their unnatural origins. In Genesis, Chapter 30, verse 35, it states that Jacob, English translation of the name Yaqub, 
was able to produce unusually colored livestock through the use of skillful breeding techniques. This is the Bible. Where, hold on. Hold on. I'm about to violate. I'm going here, folks. This is Sparta. I'm, I'm about to get in trouble. I don't care. I don't care. Copyright claim. Crumb. Th th this is YouTube sending me an email. You've got a copyright claim. Family, I don't own the rights to this video. It's not mine. I'm not claiming it. I'm not monetizing it. YouTube, fall back. This is the Bible. <laughs> This is the Bible. <laughs> Bro, this the this the whole Bible. It took Jacob 6 years. Here we go with the 6 again to successfully change the color of the flock according to Genesis chapter 31 verse 41. The book of Jewish tradition is called the Mitra, uh, uh, Midrash. Rabbi actually, use, uh, actually uses the Bible story to explain the birth of white children to black parents. Knowledge of self. This is just a connection just to kind of confirm this story to say, hey, these people were called Tamahu. There's a whole story behind that of how they... <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm on one today uh, of how they came there causing trouble. They they were labeled as Tamahu and then they kicked them out. This is where the story gets interesting. I need y'all to follow me. The king of the Ebonoid people realized that it was Yakub's Albanoids who were causing all the trouble. And the king made a decree to drive Yakub's evil Albanoids from amongst them. The king rounded up all of Yakub's Albanoids and stripped them of their clothing and put an apron on them to hide their nakedness and sent his army with them across the desert to cross the burning sands into the place which is modern day Europe. Did y'all catch that? Did y'all catch that? Once the Egyptians, the Comitians or Comesh, whatever you want to call them, those melanated people who lived in that region before it was uh, um, what it is today, um, they had to go across these burning deserts. I'm sorry, yeah, a, a burning sands, a burning desert to get back to where they were from. I know a lot of you may not be tapped in, but if you type in to get family, what do you got to do to get the right answer? Somebody tap in real quick. What do you have to do to get the right answer? If you're a master student, I expect you to know this one. If you're a master student, I expect you to know to get the right answer. What do you have to do? What do you have to do, folks? Nope. Here it is. To get the right answer. You got to ask the right question. That's the catch. You can get any answer you want. You just got to know the question. That's the hard part. The answer ain't even hard. The question is the hard part. Surprise! That's just how, that's just how ish work. I didn't make that up. So now when they talk about burning sands, you'd be like, Crumb, I don't understand the significance of burning sands. Well, if you Google crossing the burning sands, this is from unlv.edu. Um... I think Las Vegas, and that can't be, that's no, definitely not Las, I don't know what UNLV stands for, it's one of these colleges or universities. Um, the term means different things to different groups, but generally means crossing over from being a pledge to a full member. Crown, what you talking about a full member? Here's the secrecy, folks. They're talking about sororities and fraternities. Group most groups record this time. Uh, uh, re most groups record this time to the second term. Also refers to crossing of the burning sands. 
the membership educator, short for Dean of Pledges, of Pledges, is an old term that the groups still use. Well, what does this have to do with anything, Crump? This is initiation. This is no different than Masonic initiation. No, Crumb, you can't connect Masons and like fraternities and sororities, can you? Yeah, yeah, you absolutely can. And you can't even like disassociate them. They're one in the same. You know, it's, 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 it's almost like Coke and Pepsi. Oh, fraternities are different than, 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 than Masonic lodges and, and, and uh, sororities are different from um, uh, the uh, Eastern stars. Yeah, okay. And Pepsi is different from Coca-Cola, whatever. <laughs> Get it? You know, <laughs> tomato, tomato. They're all doing the same initiation. Crossing Burning Sands Masons. Burning Sands gives us the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, let me just, uh, I want to see something. Uh, masonry. Crossing the Burning Sands Masonry. The Burning Sands by Paul Somebody illustrates the free uh, uh, illustrating a black Freemason member standing in a desert as a as a camel rider. Uh, let me go to images real quick. Here we go. I think that's supposed to be Noble Jew Ali. I don't know, but uh, yeah, crossing the burning sands, uh, the dark side of American hazing rituals, and yada yada yada. You got to cross the burning sands. This is all based off the story of Yakub. Yakub created these people, and they were the first ones who had to take. You can remember when you're dealing with Egypt, you're dealing with adept places, you're dealing with high science, you're dealing with pyramids, and some people say you're dealing with aliens. So now, if anybody's going to take your ass through an initiation, it's going to be the Egyptians. The Egyptians were the first people to take took these daggone Tamahu through an initiation called crossing the burning sands. Somebody better talk black to me. So I just need y'all to tap in when I say crossing the burning sands. I don't want you to think it's just a random Yakub thing. Eh, it's a little bit deeper. I digress. Yakub salvanoids were roped into the mountains and caves and the king's army would patrol the area to make sure Yakub salvanoids stayed in the mountains and caves for 2,000 years to ensure that these people are kept away from the Evanoid people. They were roped in. There was a standing army right there to make sure don't nobody like it's not that we're going to make you cross the desert and then hope that you don't come back nah bro we're going to rope you in we're going to put guards there and the guards will stand there for 2000 years you bet not <laughs> don't even think about it hey gemini is so funny <laughs> Hey, I you know I'm 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 with you 100. Uh, percent So with that said, um, right, these people crossed the burning sands. They were forced into this mount mountainous um, area that wasn't um, conducive to civilized living. This is where the 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 name Europa or Europe, which has the word rope in it. These people were roped off like you can't come out on some real ish. Um, the people under the stairs type of thing. So let's continue on. During this 2000 year period living in the mountains in case without anything to start civilization, Yakub's albinoids became shameless and lost all sense of shame and started going nude. And in the winter, they wore animal skins for clothes and grew hair all over their bodies and faces like all the other wild animals. Yakub Salvanoids tamed the wolves and dogs to live in the caves with them. And These people, after they got into the caves, they developed this weird relationship with dogs. And I forgot to put it in here, but I'm going to put it in here right now. Romulus and Remus statue. 
I need y'all to tap in. These people, you know, this is by the island of Patmos. We sent uh, Yakub over there. Y'all came back. Instead of putting you on a boat like we did the last time, we're going to send you back over there. But you got to cross the burning sands this time. And we're going to put guards on, on standby for 2,000 years to make sure that you don't come out. <clears throat> so the only place, the only op, they had no option to go down. They had to go up. So when, as they go up, they start their first real civilization, which we know is Rome, not their first real one, their greatest one, their greatest civilization, uh, 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 civilization, which was called Rome. And Rome was based off two brothers. When I say that they had this weird relationship with dogs, I need you to tap in. This is not, this is all science. This is right and exact. Um, so now the city of Rome was based off of the mythological story of two brothers named Romulus and Remus who have a story that parallels with that of Moses. Remember, Moses' mother gave him up, put him, uh, 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 sent his ass up shit creek. I'm just being funny. But yeah, Moses' mama sent his ass up shit creek. And he, you know, it was, that's where the story begins. Well, the same story of Moses is the same story of Romulus and Remus. Romulus and Remus' mama uh, was a deadbeat mom and she sent her babies up Shit's Creek and a wolf adopted them. Now, keep in mind, what do we know about this wolf? This wolf um, obviously just had pups because she was full of milk. Something happened to her pups and she needed to nurse. She needed to nurse something. This, this wolf was in her maternal state. And what do you call a female dog in heat going through these emotions? I'm not going to say it. I need you to say it. What do you call a female dog who is in heat going through these emotions? I know somebody knows what I'm talking about. A female dog. Because, hey, Crumb, if it was a wolf, the wolf would have ate them. Yeah, the wolf would probably eat them. But if the wolf just lost her pups to what we don't know the backstory of the wolf. But if, thank you. Thank you, Pete Easy. Be <laughs> That's right. You ugly man. <laughs> right. Mo hey. I that's what that, that, that's how most sunshine said. That's how I say it. That's how grandma said that, you know, so with that said, we know what a female dog is in heat. Now, remember, she adopted this female dog in heat, adopted these two sons. Is anybody connecting the dots? This bit adopted two sons. These are the sons. Come on, family. Somebody talk black to me. These are the sons of a... Oh, my God. Nobody? Nobody? These are the sons of a bear. These are... This is the term sons of a... Son of a bear. This is where that comes from. When I tell you the European guy, oh, crumb, man's best friend, slow down. We're not there yet. Y'all, y'all be like, crumb, right. There you go. Hold on, hold on. Shout out to Pete Easy. In my best, um, uh, what was the guy? Uh, Bernie Mac voice. Some of them a bit. Some of them in the best Bernie Mac jank. You know what I'm talking about. You SOB. That's right. Oh, see, Mo Sunshine looked like she got a good, colorful vocabulary. She know how to put them words together. I didn't, I didn't know that about you, Mo Sunshine. You be putting them words together. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so now, with that said, moving the conversation forward. Their mother sends them up Ish Creek in, in a basket. And uh, a dog in heat who just lost their pups, who's full of milk, finds them adopts them hold on screenshot this joint said only got one person watching right now see why why do they be doing that to me it's like is that the algorithm or is that 
is that because I gotta I'm, I'm not even on Wi-Fi. I'm on a hard connection. My joint say one person watching right now. If I, I didn't I didn't say something to trip the algorithm, Lord knows. Okay, now it says 229. Let me share a screen just because somebody crime, you be making stuff up. Crime, you conspiracy theorists, you guys be paranoid. No, no, like really, uh, I don't even feel like going to it. Let's continue the conversation. Anyway, um, this female dog, which is a bit, has these two sons. These two twin boys, they grow up. They have that uh, Cain and Abel story where one kills the other. Romulus dies. Remus goes on. I'm sorry. Remus dies. Romulus goes on to create and found Rome. This is the weird. You'd be like, oh, crumb. If they lick a dog in the mouth in your face, just imagine what they're doing behind closed doors. I know. Yeah. I, we already know. The, the part about them licking dogs in the mouth, we know that. Imagining what they do behind closed doors, that's nothing new. The part where they let their, their babies suckle from dogs, that's, that's it's, okay, now you're getting, letting your baby suckle from a dog, now, now the relationship with dogs is getting a little more weird. So I need you to follow the story uh, because it's definitely deeper than rap. Uh, here we go. For some time, the dog held a high place among their tame. They grew hair all over their bodies and faces like all the other wild animals. Yuck. They grew hair all... Hold on. Did I go back far enough? Let's see. Here, period, living in the mountains and caves without anything to start civilization. Yakub's albinoids became shameless and lost all sense of shame and started going nude. And in the winter, they wore animal skins for clothes and grew hair all over their bodies and faces like all the other wild animals. Yakub Salvanoids tamed the wolves and dogs to live in the caves with them. And after some time, the dog held a high place among their family, becoming their best friend. The dog held a high place amongst their, uh, within their family. This statue right here, not only is it in Italy, there's a city right here in Georgia called Rome. This same statue is in Georgia. So when I say, I'm sorry, not just some random place in Georgia. Yeah, Kermit, it was in the country in the backyard, somebody's house. No, no, in City Hall. In, in the city of Rome, inside the state of Georgia, at the Capitol Hall of that city, this statue is there. They hold the dog in high regard. It's not like some thing that I'm making up. We all pretty much know that at this point. It's no secret. They hold the dog in such high regard. Yo ass hold the dog in such high regard now. You done fell in love with the dog because they done fell in love with the goddamn dog. <laughs> After 2,000 years of living in the caves, the wickedness of Yakub's albinoids was observed and an ebonoid man named Moshe was sent to civilize them. A guy by the name of Moshe or Moshe. You know Moshe, oh, oh, I'm sorry, really quickly, really quickly. I meant to show you this in terms of them growing hair all around uh, on their body. Family, ain't nobody making nothing up. Oh, Crumb, them growing hair all over their body. That's you, Crumb. You be making stuff up. That's your imagination. You see, Crumb, that's the propaganda. You guys just be going ham. You give them an inch, they take a mile. Crumb, you be reaching. Bruh, when I tell you they grew hair all over their body, I'm only confirming what they've already told you. What did the court gesture tell you? A lot of truth is said in jest. That's why old boy was able to get away with calling the, the, um, the rainbow people out, um, Dave Chappelle. A lot of truth is said in jest. Oh, Crumb, they were just joking. No, they weren't joking. Y'all better tap in. Signs and symbols for the conscious mind. This stuff just don't be random. Somebody just, somebody just made that up. No, they didn't. No. In addition to that, you ain't never seen a black caveman. Because that's not your story. Staying in your lane, melanated indigenous brothers and sisters. Moshe let Yakub's albinoids out of the caves. However, once out of the caves, Yakub's albinoids killed Moshe. Hold on. 
crumb, now you're reaching. You said these albinoids that Moshe or Moshe, who we know is Moses, once they once he let them out, they killed him. Can you tie that into something else? Yeah. Yeah, sure can, family. Sure can. Anybody ever heard? Okay, here, let me. To get the right answer, you have to ask the right question. I think I've beat that horse enough. Let me just read. Ikra. Sigmund Freud said the Jews felt bad about killing Moses. That's what I Googled. Crumb, can I check behind you? Sure can. Just Google that. <laughs> First result, Moses in, in the thought of Freud, an amb ambivalent interpretation. This essay present, represents a condensation from several chapters of the book issued this month by somebody. Uh, Moses, murder, and Jewish psyche. Because they felt guilty. Remember, Freud is a therapist. He's going to read your emotions. Oh, you have daddy issues. Yeah, that's Freud. That's what he does. Originally, as, as I briefly stated earlier, Freud needed his thesis of the murder of Moses to account for Jewish guilt. Can somebody press 666 if they did not know this? Can somebody press 666 if they did not know this? With all due respect. Yo, y'all, family, all I'm saying is, is, is if you press 666, not to feed my ego, but to give me my flowers. Get, all I'm asking for is my, yeah, I'm not going to donate a dollar. Okay, don't donate a dollar. I'm not tripping, but at least give me my 666. Give me my flowers, family. I'm not just making this up. The story of the crumb, the history of Happy White History Month. That's crazy. Like, no, no, <laughs> it's actually not. Let's 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 learn in terms of White History Month. I'm about to I'm about to take a walk with me. Follow me. Sigmund Freud is Jewish. Okay. This synopsis, this, this, this conclusion, he made this conclusion on his deathbed. Had he made this conclusion a day before he died, the book that he put this in, the book that he put this in was published the year after, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the year he died. Had he published this before he died, they would have kicked him out of the Jewish community. But he did this post, post mutilously. Post mutilously. How do you say it? Posthumously. 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 I'm struggling, family, if you can't tell. Posthumously is when you do something after you die. Bro, when that Biggie album came out after Biggie died, that joint was straight heat rock because Biggie had just died. A lot of us didn't even know who Nipsey Hussle was until after he died. Nipsey Hussle's success was posthumously. 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 Old boy dropped this on his community after he died and said, hey, guys, the reason Jewish people love Moses so much, according to Sigmund Freud, the psychologist, the psychoanalytic, uh, psychoanalyticist or whatever he calls himself, is because they feel bad because they murdered Moses. OK. OK, let's go back to the story of Yakub. Somebody tap in. After 2,000 years of living in the caves, the wickedness of Yakub's albinoids was observed, and an ebonoid man named Moshe was sent to civilize them. Moshe led Yakub's albinoids out of the caves. However, once out of the caves, Yakub's albinoids killed Moshe. Free from the caves, Yakub's albinoids went on a rampage throughout the earth conquering and subjecting the ebonoid people, pitting one against the other using the idea of divide and conquer. Yakub's albinoids began to execute Yakub's plan for them to rule the world for 6,000 years. 
I was I wanted to talk about this next. I don't know what this is. Oh, 24. I'm not ready for that. A man named Mahamdu attempted to teach Yaqub's albinoids to convince them to end their devilishment. However, who was Mom Mohamdu? Why don't I have my Jeopardy music? That should be a crumb. The real question is, why don't you have your Jeopardy music? That's correct. That's the real question. You think I would after so many videos, I would have it on tap or maybe download it. That would be a great idea. I should just download it versus going through this whole rigmarole every single time. And by the time I even get to the video, I don't own the rights to this. Not my video. It's not being monetized. Somebody already gave the answer. Let me see. I bet. Yep. Muhammad. Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Muhammad, peace be upon him. That's right. That's right. That's right. Let's go. However, this was still 1400 years before the end of Yaqub's albinoid 6,000 year period of dominion over the earth. And so, Yaqub's albinoids ruled the earth for 6,000 years, spreading their devilishment, evil, pain, suffering, and oppression to the ebonoid people of the earth as designed by the big head scientist Yaqub. The events of Yaqub occurred approximately 6,600 years ago and the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth foresaw the birth of Yaqub 15,000 years ago. The 24 elders of inner earth oversaw all of this. Crumb, why is that important? The 24 elders of the inner earth? Because if you go to the book of uh, Revelations 4, uh, uh, chapter 4, 4 verse 4, um, it talks about how John sees the celestial earth the throne of God, and all created things worshiping the Lord. All created things. And around about the throne were four and twenty seats. You do the math. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty-four elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Where'd that story come from? It's all in alignment, folks. Y'all better tap in. Are you saying it's all the same, just people just kind of reinventing it based off their culture? Yeah, you don't say. The events of Yakub occurred approximately 6,600 years ago, and the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth foresaw the birth of Yakub 15,000 years ago. 6,600 years. It's actually at this point, 6,666 years. Around this time, like this video is, is like 10 years old or something like that. And the, the person who was talking about it was talking about it. It was in a different time period as well. It's been about 6,660 years, folks, just to kind of bring you up to date. No pun intended. This history or future of Yaqub and his people was predicted and foretold by the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth 8,400 years before the birth of Yaqub. The 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth were aware of the birth of Yaqub, and they were aware of the things Yaqub would do before Yaqub was even born. The 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth predicted that in the year 8,400, this man Yaqub would be born, and when this man was born, he will change civilization in the world, and produce a new tribe of people, who would rule the original Ebonoid people for 6,000 years, from the 9,000th year to the 15,000th year. After the 6,000th year rule of Yaqub's people, the Ebonoid people would give birth to one whose wisdom, knowledge and power would be infinite. One whom the world would recognize as being the greatest and mightiest since the creation of the universe, and that Yaqub's old warring wicked world would be removed and destroyed, and the Ebonoid nation would be restored into power to rule forever and to establish a world of peace and righteousness. There it is. There's your savior. There's your savior. This great redeemer of the Ebonoid people who was... They call him the redeemer. Who that? Predicted by the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth to bring balance back into the world is known under many names, titles, and attributes including he who has no equal, he who there never was anyone like, the supreme being, the mighty, the wise, the best knower, the light, the life giver, the guide, the all powerful, he who knows how to reproduce the universe and the people of his choice. But his mother calls him Yashmal. But his mama call him Yah. Sound like somebody you know, Yah? 
His mama called him Yah. Okay. Interesting. Your mama called you Yah. Okay. But his mama actually called him Yah Yashmal. It's actually, but if, if you look up the word Yah, Yah in exclamation is yes. Yah. However, um, it's also an upper class person. Um, now, when we're dealing with Yah, Yah is in so many words. I'm sorry. Yah uh, is sometimes confused with Ja. It's tip right here. Hold, can you see that? Okay, yeah, you can't see that. Yah is sometimes confused with Ja because initially there was no letter J. It eventually became a letter J. Oh, come on, Jesus Louise. I didn't want you to see that. I want to look right here. Ja or Yah is a short form of the Hebrew, the four letters that form the tetragrammaton, the personal name of God, Yahweh. Now, uh, which uh, the ancient Israelites used. Now I wanted to show you the word way, because remember there, there were no um, A-E-I-O-U, all of that grimoire, that stuff wasn't there. Um, so way uh, soar, um, technically, because when we're dealing with the word mall, you got to have to go to Spanish for that one. If you look up mall, then you're going to find bad. Um, wrongful. Yah, yes, good, mall, bad. Yahweh, agreeable, disagreeable, positive, negative, yin, yang, I'm here to bring balance. Uh, Yahshua, um, positive, neutral, negative, the trifecta. Yahweh is the duality. Um, so they called him Yashmal because he brung balance to the good and the bad. Remember, old boy just wanted to focus on the bad. Oh, this dude says, listen, we're not just going to focus on the good. We're not just going to focus on the bad. We're going to have them all together. Perfect uh, balance. Yashmal was the son of Princess Radiyah of the Shemuk family and Prince Atif, the Sinin family. Yashmal's parents, Princess Radiyah and Prince Atif, married each other in order to establish peace between their two quarreling tribes. Really quickly. We're at 20 minutes and 11 seconds. I want, and I just want to take a time stamp. Yesterday, I talked about these people and I connected them to the Hindu Ganesh. Hindu Ganesh. Images. So you're going to see this pale elephant who is fat who has a trunk and, 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 and you have these pale fat elephant people with a trunk, check. So now when you're dealing with, uh, what was I at, 2011? When you're dealing with this guy, Yashmal, you should be of no surprise, he has a Hindu equivalent, just like the Ganesh, Yashpal. The, the, uh, uh, just take out the M for the P. Okay, so this is going to cover your Hindu, this is going to cover your Brahma, this is going to cover your, uh, I forgot the other one, it's kind of this new age type of Zoroastrianism, mumbo jumbo, uh, no disrespect, but obviously that was disrespectful. Anyway, so uh, I just want to connect Yash Paul to the Hindu because there's these inner earth uh, um, uh, pantheon of gods. Crumb, there's a lot of aliens down there or gods. Because some people will tell you that 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 Hindu stuff sound kind of like real outer space ish. Um, let me just check the you know see if I do. Some people say the Hindu religion sounds like outer space. NASA recorded the sacred Hindu arm sound from the sun. Spiritual religion, culture, and peace. Exploring uh, this paper about uh, spiritual religious yada yada. I want to go for the Hindus. Um, sounds okay. The word sounds might not be in there, but anyway, this is why I like doing PowerPoint so I can have it all ready to go before I sit here looking like I'm reaching. Because, uh, anyway, so with that said, 
um, Yash Paul is also the equivalent of Yash Maul. Because these inner earth gods, these pantheon of gods, affected a lot of different cultures. Remember, Jesus, that time where he disappeared on your ass? Hey, uh, I ain't seen Jesus since he was about 12. Anybody know where he at? King Herod been looking for him. Nah, we ain't seen Jesus since he was since his bar mitzvah. After the bar mitzvah, he was in a synagogue arguing with the Pharisees and Sadducees. We ain't seen him since. Oh, he was over there in India with the Ganesh, with Yash Paul in them. Anyway, keep going. Two quarreling tribes. However, the union of Princess Radhiya and Prince Atif was more than mere chance. Their union was specifically guided, selected, and arranged by the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth who were also genetic engineers. They knew that the offspring of the union between Princess Radhiya and Prince Atif would be the personification of order to balance out and offset the chaos of Yakub, who was the offspring of Yishak and Princess Lusana. Yashmal began his education on the day he was born, as is the custom amongst members of the Shiyuk. It would be unheard of for a member of the Shiyuk to wait until the age of four to start school unless the child was mentally handicapped. Being part Shiyuk and part Sinim, Yashmal's head was noticeably larger than the other members of the Shiyuk and Sinim. Yashmal had an enormous head, two brains, and a third enlarged pineal gland which sat in the center of his two brains, making the top of his head appearing to be shaped like three horse. He basically had a big head. That's how we are. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Amongst the Shiyuk and Sinim, Yashmal would be called the big head scientist. However, amongst these tribes, this statement was not taken to be an insult, but radical activities which transpired at the hands of his cousin Yaku. One day, when Yashmal was nine years old, and I will eliminate the establishment which has come in. It is common for members of the Shiyuk tribe to finish all of the coursework taught in all of the team, but Yashmal was a genius and a prodigy. After finishing school, Yashmal met with the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth and told them of the peace and redeemer of the Adonite people. Yashmal was tried and tested by the as the ones region near the countries of Tanzania, Uganda. All right, so this is where we get to, and I had to just fast forward through that. Yashmal goes through his training equivalent to his cousin Yakub. He's smart. He has, you know, the same background as Yakub, so on and so forth. We've already heard the story. Uh, it's the opposite of Yakub's you know, so I just want to skip that part. Now he goes to make Ish right. And Kenya in Africa. Yashmal called his new doctrine Teach Knowledge, and his holy book was called the Book of Teach Knowledge of 720 Degrees. Now, if you go and look, Malachi Z. York is, as far as I know, the only person uh, within a conscious community who claims to have 720 degrees of knowledge, um, which basically is two circles on the well, I'm not going to go into too much into the Malachi Z. York thing, but 720 degrees of knowledge means you've been around twice. This is the second coming. The coming around goes around and comes around and goes around again. 720 is 360 double, just in case you don't know. Um, I assume you did. How many degrees in a circle? 360. How many degrees in a square? 360. What's 360 plus 360 or what's 360 times two? That's right, 720 which was in a question and answer format designed to get the mental energies of the listeners flowing in the same direction, which would in turn create unity, harmony. He, he, he posed the uh, teachingology uh, pamphlet in a Q&A form. If you go to the Nation of Islam, the 120 degrees uh, are in Q&A form. You go to the, um, the uh, more Science Temple, the, uh, the Circle 7 Quran is in Q&A form. If you go to... Uh, a lot of these schools of thoughts, their information, even in the Masonic Lodge, is set up in, uh, well, maybe I'm saying too much with that. I'm being liberal. Uh, but a lot of it is in Q&A form based off teachnology. An attraction amongst kindred. Yashmal's new doctrine was so powerful that he had millions of people from all of the tribes on the earth coming to hear his message and aspiring to be a part of his mission. However, from the millions of followers that he gained on the surface of the earth, Yashmal only selected 144,000 which he called the chosen few to be a part of the next phase of his plan. And when Yashmal and his chosen... So Yashmal, this Jesus character, remember the story of Yaqub is already covered. Moshe is already called... Uh, well, Moses is already covered. Muhammad, now we're covering the Jesus character. Um, so now with this Jesus character, he's going to come back for 144,000. That's it. Oh, you know, only 144,000 coming. And after that, the meek shall inherit the earth. Okay, listen, listen, folks. Chosen few departed. He told the people on the surface of the earth he would be back in one day. So Yashmal selected 41,100. Jesus told you he, he coming back. 150 ebonoid females and 41,140 ebonoid males for a total of 82,290 people from the original ebonoid tribe. Yashmal selected 10,285 ebonoid tribe, which made 144,000 people total. 
They were just going over the numbers of how it got to 144,000. Eh, all right, I don't care. All right, this part is pretty informational. I'll play this and we can kind of go from there. Regular speed. Crafted back into the original Ebonoid tribe. Yashmal also observed that the gene of the Ebonoid woman was the most dominant gene. And so Yashmal established the following rules of arranged marriages amongst his followers. Hold on. Hold on. Crumb, can you confirm that? Master student, can you confirm that? The melanated woman, ebonoid woman, her gene is the strongest gene. And the white male, the albino, albinoid male, his gene is the weakest gene. Crumb, can you confirm that? Let me see if I can do that for you, folks. Wimpy white boy syndrome. Some dude, a uh, neonatologist with the Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters in Norfolk, Virginia, defines this condition as the neonatal intensive care, uh, NICU uh, unit, editorial as neonatal white boy uh, with pre-adjusted gest gestational age 35 to 40 weeks, who is failing to achieve the de de developmental landmarks of weaning to an open crib, dot, dot, dot. And look right here, folks. It says wimpy white boy syndrome. You can go and do your research and read this on your own. What they're saying is the children, this is not premature. Oh, crumb, you know that. In, your, in the neonatal unit, you're going to deal with preemies and things like that. No! I'm talking about the little white boys, infants, who went full term and were still born as if they were a preemie. That condition is described by the scientific or the uh, medical industry, you know, their jargon as wimpy white boy syndrome. So now, White girls are second. Well, let me see if I can pull the numbers on this. Let me see. Who is least likely to suffer from wimpy white boy syndrome? All those statistics back up the belief that premature born black babies will do better than wimpy white boy in most cases, that's not guaranteed. Wimpy white boy syndrome, uh, wimpy white boy syndrome, wimpy, na, 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 na. it's like a graph or something I can look at, kind of just kind of put it in context. Um, some white boys and Nick U, okay. Um, Let me see what they say. Uh, anyway, I'll just spill the beans. This is why I love to do PowerPoints. You take a wild guess. Who is the least likely to suffer from wimpy white boy syndrome? Who is the opposite of a wimpy white boy? Uh, the answer, just in case you didn't know, is the melanated woman. The weakest genes in terms of a baby that, 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 that's gone full term is going to be a male albinoid. The strongest genes are going to be, even if yo, even if little baby Kiki is born at 30 weeks, there's a real good chance she Gucci. Now, Cody, if Cody is born um, after 40 weeks, Cody, mama might carry his ass 44 weeks. I carried my baby for 44 weeks and your baby still came out because we know they have the weakest gene set according to science. Go look up wimpy white boy syndrome for yourself. Um, go look go, go look at my, my uh, video, Kamala Harris destroyed. I broke it down in full there. I'm struggling now, but I did the PowerPoint, Kamala Harris destroyed. And that's the one I uh, went into detail about wimpy white boy syndrome because Kamala Harris is destroying strong black uh, so uh, melanated men or indigenous, whatever.
10,285 Evanoid women and 10,285 Evanoid men would marry to keep the Evanoid gene strong and pure. 10,285 Evanoid women would marry 10,285 Rubeloid men. 10,285 Evanoid women would marry 10,285 Citronoid men. 10,285 Evanoid women would marry 10,285. They basically got the melanated woman to marry the uh, all the other people. And I think this is the birth outcome of those children. Was the Evanoid. The offspring of the Evanoid woman and the Rubeloid man would also be Evanoid because of the strength of the Evanoid woman's genes. Her genes are, are strong and they match the melanated man's, so they're going to have the same children. Her gene is stronger than his, so the, ba the babies are 75% chance going to be hers. Uh, same thing with the other ones. The offspring of the Evanoid woman and the Citronoid man would be Evanoid 75% of the time, and Rubeloid 25% of the time, because of the strength of the Evanoid woman's genes. The offspring of the Evanoid woman and the Albinoid man would be Evanoid 75% of the time, and Citronoid... For those who don't know, and I'm not going through the whole thing, this is called a pundit square. I believe it's called a pundit square. I might be wrong. Pundit square. Yeah, yeah. A pundit square. Uh, I think it was Mendel who created this, the father of genealogy or something to that effect. So, um, you know, because she is the dominant gene the child is 75% chance of being her. This is right and exact. This is not some, you know, YouTube guy just talking on the internet, but technically it is. <laughs> uh, tribes. After another 16 generations, all of the citronoids have been grafted back into the root points and nevenoids. After another 18 generations, all of the root points have... But with that said, I reached my hour. You basically already know what it is from here. He kind of set things straight. He came back full-fledged. With that said, family, um, I want to let you know that this has been another installation of Crumb TV. If you want to support, you can take the dollar challenge and donate to Cash App Money Sign Crumb TV. That's Cash App Money Sign Crumb TV. Take the one, take the one dollar challenge. Uh, it is greatly appreciated. Uh, and I want to just give a shout out to my supporters, as I always do. Melissa Smith, she says, peace, love, and light. Christopher Smith, uh, I wonder are they are they related? Very good chance, I assume. Maybe not. Maybe so. Um, QB, uh, Happy White History Month. Ah, that's funny. <laughs> uh, Carlos Little uh, for Indigenous King on YouTube, just blowing a little love. Salute, family. I see you. I love you. I appreciate you, Lashawn. Uh, so on, so forth. So thank. You. Uh, well, those are the people that I've got so far. I'm not snubbing anybody or not acknowledging them with that said family you don't have to uh, uh put money in, in into the pot i am not past the pork chop i am not past the chicken wing you know um i do this because i love you but you can also smash that like button you know you watch this thing for just about an hour family give me my flowers stop playing with me you owe me my flowers that's number one it's free it's easy it's fast it means a lot what more can i say also comment let me know what you think about this white history month is it different is it fun should i do it next year tap in let me know uh last but not least family you can also subscribe here on youtube but more so if you could subscribe on crumbtv.info that would mean more so to me than the other stuff so um Please, please, please go subscribe over there, crumbtv.info. You'll get emails, you'll get discounts, you'll get merch, you'll get uh, uh, updates. When everything happens, you'll be the first to know. Um, Crumb, they took you off YouTube. What happened? Oh, you didn't subscribe. Okay, well, listen, I told everybody. Hey, guys, we're over here on, I don't know, TikTok or wherever else, I'll, wherever I be at, you know. Um, but, you know, with that said, uh, I want to leave you the exact same way I came to you, family. I am your humble brother, Crumb, and you are now watching Crumb TV. You are now watching Crumb TV. You are watching Crumb TV. This is Prema Asset in Los Angeles, Lemur Park, and you are now watching Crumb TV. You are watching Crumb TV. We are watching Crumb TV. You are now watching Crumb TV. So subscribe. Look. I am the Grand Sheikah's uh, Unity Temple number 80 more Science Temple of America, and you are watching Crumb TV. Yo, this is that kid 179. You are now watching 